Hello, family, friends, uh, those who follow me are members of Spiritual Encrypted Encounters on Facebook <clears throat> and on YouTube. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Uh, it's been a couple of rough days for me. Well, actually, like almost about a week. Uh, I've been feeling uh, sick, a lot of congestion. Uh, I went to the doctor uh, yesterday to the emergency room because I couldn't take it no more. But luckily, it was nothing serious. It was just a severe case of allergies. Um, I got tested for, for COVID and for everything else, and everything came out negative, which is a good thing. <clears throat> when I was there, the doctor asked me, because they know I don't have no COVID shot, they asked me if I was afraid if it was if it was COVID that I might have, and I said no. And they said, what, uh, are you afraid if it's like the flu? And I said no, because I don't even have the the flu shots. So, you know, they, they went over there, did what they had to do, and just like uh, I told them that I felt that it's, that I had allergies because I know my body, uh, and that's exactly what it was. You know, um, in saying that, sometimes, <clears throat> it doesn't matter who it is, sometimes people try to use the fear factor, you know, why they do it. Only, you know, it's a spiritual thing. You know, they try to give you the, the worst of the worst case scenario. But if you know your body and you're telling them, I believe this is what I have. You know, I just need, you know, for you to give me something to help me out. Uh, I don't know why they go to the extreme. I can understand maybe if they did the, ran the test uh, and find out that I had COVID or the flu or something of that nature. But it didn't happen that way, right? Uh, but they always go for the fear factor. Uh, I don't, I don't accept. To me, when somebody comes in that manner, as a form of negativity, uh, I don't accept any form of negativity. I don't, I don't accept different scenarios, different thoughts of how, how people think or what people think. Uh, you know, I have my faith and belief in Jesus Christ. And that's what I place first always. Regardless of what, whatever is happening to me physically, I place Jesus Christ first. Uh, but that's what the doctor told me. You know, he's like, he told me, are you afraid if you have COVID or you're afraid if you have the flu? I said, no, because I don't think I have that. I think I just, it's the bad case of allergies that happen to me every year. They want to do the test and they find out that's what, exactly what it was, you know. But I just don't understand why doctors... You know, whether it's doctors, why they will try to make you think for the worse. You know, I believe all that is, is like a spiritual opening. So to those that ever go through, you know, to an emergency room, they try to think positive, think positive and pledge Jesus Christ first. Then I know that everything will come out, come out okay, uh, just like it did for me. <clears throat> Ever since that storm came through, I've been feeling not too, not too well. I started having all kinds of allergies, and uh, I couldn't breathe right. Uh, a lot of coughing, a lot of feeling nauseated, dizzy. Uh, so they gave me some Flonase, and they gave me uh, some kind of uh, medicine for the cough. But I'm doing a little bit better today, just making this video. How you doing there, Brother Luis Hernandez? I'm just doing this video here on, on, on my page, uh, or my timeline, should I say. Yeah, uh, it's, it's always happens to me that like that at the VA, you know, when I go to the VA, you know. Uh, so I, sometimes I get good treatment, and then sometimes I get real, real bad, bad treatment. Uh, one of the treatments, you know, they always ask you this at the VA. They ask you. Are you, do you, do you think about hurting yourself or hurting some, someone else? That's what they tell me. And I'm, I don't answer to them because, you know, that thought is, is always there, you know, it's where I've been in combat and stuff. You know, uh, I had to take out people out there. Not, not take them out to lunch. I had to, you know, took them out of this world. You know, that's a thought that's always with me, you know, of, of, uh, you know, the people's lives that I took in. 
It, it, it doesn't go nowhere. It's not you can't hide it nowhere. So when they ask me these stupid questions about uh, suicide and all this this crap, it's like to me I've been going to the VA for numerous of freaking years since 2002 all the way 2024. I've told I've I've, I've told them that I have PTSD because of things that happened to me where I have flashbacks of you know doing what I had to do out there in combat and. Other things were where dogs were eating the human body parts, and you know I talked to them and I asked them for help. They rejected me. It's been uh, twenty uh, twenty two years, uh, twenty two years to so two thousand two to twenty twenty four. Twenty two twenty two years that the the VA I got a piece of paper right there where they rejected me again for PTSD. So all I gotta say is this. If something something were to happen one day, you know, I've, I've asked for help. They deny my help. If if I if if something were to happen one day, God forbid, something happened one day, and I just lose it completely and go on a freaking uh, killing spree, you know, I uh, hope nobody helps me accountable for that because I've been pleading for help for for numerous years, and they've rejected me every single time. You know, I was in the Battle of Medina Ridge. We killed people in combat. We killed uh, the uh, the soldiers of the Saddam Hussein's, uh, which was uh, the Medina Republican Guard. So, you know, that's why the VA is kind of funny to me. They ask me all this shit, but they can help me for the help that I need. You know, I don't even know why they even ask me. Or you do you think of suicide? That's that's an automatic, you know. Um, and they reject me. They reject me all these years, you know. Not unless somebody knows uh, which which way to go to get the proper help. But the VA the VA ain't doing that shit, you know. They the VA ain't help me for shit. Uh, I'm lucky that I got the help that I that I got yesterday, you know. But it's kind of like. Uh, that's how I see it, you know. I've told them numerous times, hey, I, I have PTSD, you know. Thoughts come to me. No help at all. They send me to bullshit, to bullshit uh, facilities where there's nobody there. <laughs> Playing mind games, you know. I'm like, God dang. You know, uh, I'm telling you. If one day, if, if I were to do something one day, it would be out of self-defense. That's all I can tell you right now. Because I ain't gonna be taking games from nobody from the VA or for them to fuck with me in any kind of way. They already they already tried to do that before in the past. Uh, at King Daughters Hospital, they tried to take my life in King Daughters Hospital when they had the Obama uh, Obama blacklist. You know that's all they tried to take me out a long time ago in in uh, twenty twenty something when they tried to take me out. Like I said. If something were to happen one day, it'll be out of self-defense. You know, that's one thing I've I've been living with this this crap for for years. And if if something were to happen, it'll be out of self-defense. Me defending myself, you know, and and that's it. But the thoughts are there. You know, that's a daily thing. You know, I, I wake up, I go to sleep with those thoughts, and I wake up uh, uh with those thoughts. You know, whether you know, I never really think about taking my life, but, you know, the thoughts that do come is when people fuck with me, you know, that, you know, I want to, I'm, I'm ready to handle the situation to the extreme. It's not even about talking to anybody. It's just about handling them, you know. Um, sometimes it, it depends to the measure, you know, like of how people mess with you, you know, like I had certain individual mess with me for a, for a whole year and a half and. That was it. I just wanted to take care of it to the extreme, you know, because enough is enough, you know. And that's a simple way. Imagine the butcher that I've been through the VA for 20-something years. Until to this day, they try to tell me I don't got PTSD. When I kill people in combat, uh, I was there in the front lines where the dogs were eating body parts. The body, ba uh, body bag detail wasn't even out for about three days. You could hear the dogs fighting each other, eating potty parts, and they try to tell me I don't got no fucking PTSD. 
You know, I'm going public. I don't give a shit no more. I'm going public about this shit. Um, I've been telling them I need help. They don't want to help me. They deny me every fucking time. They fuck with me. They send me letters to say that I, that I was an exposed area or that I have PTSD. I go submit the, the paperwork and they fucking deny me. I was like, why are you playing this fucking games uh, with me? If you, you're saying I got something, at least help me out to you what you say that I have, right? But they're just playing fucking games. So God forbid they get uh, the warrior in their presence one day. The, the warrior's just going to have, say enough is enough and just start just taking out motherfuckers, man. Because the way I see it, you know, if people are fucking with me, they're my enemy. You know, that's how I see it. You know, that's what I, how, how I see it. I see it daily, you know. So why are you fucking with me? You're my enemy? You want to be my enemy? You know, the, the enemy that's been uh, against me hasn't fared well. You know, in combat, I've taken him out. I just understand why the VA always fucking... Whether it's an appointment or... Like, example, in the emergency room, said, uh, do you have uh, do you have the thoughts of of uh, committing suicide or, or killing anybody? And I don't answer to him because I've been to him for help, try to get help, and it'll help me, so when they ask me that shit, it's like making fun of me, man, you know, I feel ridiculed when they even fucking ask me that question, because I, I, I went to them for help, and they fucking deny me, what do you think, uh, when somebody asks you that question, what do you, what do you think is really in my mind when they ask me that question, you know, if I was a, a son of a bitch, you know, I could do a lot of things, but I choose not to. Uh, but when somebody asks me that fucking question, and they they know, because, you know, it's on the records, in your medical records, of how many times they denied you for PTSD. When they ask me that shit, it's like making fun of me, you know? Making fun of me serving my, me not, the United States Army, of me, uh, it's like disrespecting me for being out there in combat fighting, uh, the battle on Medina Ridge and Operation Desert Storm. You know, they just don't know how extreme I can get. You know, I hope they never find out how extreme I can get because one day, God forbid, you know, one day, you know, somebody coming at me in a negative way or in a threatful manner, I'm just going to wipe them out. I don't give a shit, you know. Put them out. Take them out. But that's a shit. That's why I don't like going to the VA facility. Yeah, they're 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 bastard they're son of a bitches uh for example i'll give an example i have a toe that i heard my i heard my toe about three months ago they said they made an appointment for me to go check out my toe then i get a phone call saying that it was just a a phone uh appointment so I can't, you know, it's like, what what is a phone, uh, a phone appointment going to do for somebody to check on my toe? So I canceled that shit. So two, two, two months passed by, and finally they make an appointment to, for me to go see somebody to check on my toe. My toe, three months passed by. Three months. I had gone to the emergency room. Three months passed by, and finally they're going to check on my toe. You know, three months. But that's the kind of service for those that are serving the military. I say to you, keep a copy of all your freaking records. If you kill somebody in combat or you went up in a battle in combat, annotate that. Get people that's, that was there. Make a form, right? With people's signatures. So you can have that as proof. That you was involved in a in a combat situation, you know. If you have, even if you're, if it's people within your platoon, if you're a tanker like I was, people within your tank, uh, make uh, make it get a statement from each person and keep that as a record for you of the time, the date that that happened, because the VA are son of a bitches. Uh, They'll, even though they, they know you've been in combat, they'll say, well, how do we know this happened? How do we know that uh, you were in the front lines? That's what they try to tell me, you know. They're, they're, they're sorry son of a bitches. Every person that works in the facility, they're just doing a fucking job. Uh, excuse my French, 
but that's how I feel about them. I've been, uh, they tried to take me out when, uh, back in 2002, uh, 2002, 2003, uh, they sent me to King Daughters Hospital, well, when they had that, some kind of list, I don't know, 20, 20, 2004, 2005, at King Daughters Hospital, I survived that bullshit, and I'm here, it's, it's bad that when your doctor sees you, this is how bad it is, when your doctor sees you and they say, oh, you're still here? This what, when they say, you're still here? Like basically saying you're still alive? Well, yeah, I'm still alive. No thanks to you. <laughs> no thanks to you helping me out. But that's what they tell me. You're still here? Imagine that. Going to a doctor and they tell you, you're still here. Instead of telling you, how you doing, sir? How's your day? Uh... How you been? No, they tell me you're still here. It's like, uh, I'm sorry for disappointing you that I'm still here. I'm a, I have a strong spirit, a strong heart. I'm a spiritual warrior. Uh, I'm a combat veteran. I'm a survivor. Just doing a little bit of venting, y'all. But the treatment I got yesterday was, was, was okay. I'm not going to complain. Uh, the doctor was pretty nice. You know, the only thing is, like I said, I don't understand when they go for the, for the juggler, when they go for the worst case scenario, worst case scenario, they asked me, you got the COVID shot? I said, no. They said, you're not worried that you're going to, you get, if you, you got COVID? I said, no. Just like I'm not worried, I don't take the, the swine flu shot. I'm not worried about that either. I know I'm not going to get it. I mean, my body's immune to that. Uh, so, no, I'm just venting out here a little bit. Sorry for being a little bit out of character, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, this, this is what, I'm tired of the VA. I have a letter right there where they, they deny me for PTSD again. Saying that, that it's like, that, they deny me for PTSD, but they haven't sent me to a doctor. Or to speak to anybody about it, to anybody within the VA facility. So my question is, how the hell do they make that assumption if I'm not speaking to anybody that's got a that's a doctor uh, for PTSD? I'm not speaking. They're, they're keeping me away from speaking to people that supposedly are from this facility. I'm thinking about hiring me a lawyer and getting help elsewhere. That's what. I, that's my next step. If I could sue the VA, I would already sue them numerous times. I would have sued them numerous times, especially what they tried to do me in King Daughters Hospital. You know, where they they, they set me up. They say I had no room to serve the VA at uh, in Temple. They sent me to King Daughters Hospital. They tried to take me out in the ICU room. You know, uh, they never tried. To, they never gave me a copy of my records. They ran me off of that hospital. King Daughters Hospital is now McLean's Children's Hospital. Uh, I'm just doing a little bit of venting here. If uh, whoever's here uh, tuning in don't mind. When you hear about there's black widows in the hospital, which means people that are, are paid to take out people, they exist. They're there. When there's uh, people within, especially the government, the VA, there's people that follow you around. They're around because I've, I've bumped into them numerous times. And I've seen them, they, they work at the VA, but they, they, they get paid to follow you around. But like I said before, you know, what can you do uh, when you seek for help and they reject you every single time? But then they get the nerve to ask you every time you go to an appointment or to a, to the, to the to the doctor, uh, do you do you feel like taking somebody's life or taking your own life? Do you feel like do you feel like you're gonna do something like that? Are you suicidal? That's what they asked me. Are you suicidal? What, what do they want me to say? Them? What, what what do they want me to tell them? Tell them yes. Uh, I feel like taking somebody's life right now, in which I don't. At the time, you know, 
It's only when somebody fucks with me that certain certain things cross my mind, right? Only when certain things are done to me, that's when I act a certain way. So it's not that I think like that 24-7. Uh, but the only thing that I do is, is get a lot of flashbacks. Uh, the flash, flashbacks that I get is a daily thing. And that never goes away. You know, I have to live that for the rest of my life. But if I had the VA, uh, for, uh, the VA PTSD or mental or, PTSD suicide hotline, I will give them no stars. Because after so many times that I've, I've asked for, for help, they deny me every single time. So their job, they'll ask you the question, but they're not paid to do the job of really helping a combat veteran. Because I'm leaving proof that they'll reject you in a heartbeat. They haven't assisted me since I've been going there, and I'm a combat veteran. They fought in the front lines of, of the Battle of Medina Ridge against the Medina Republican Guard. We destroyed many, and I still haven't gotten help from the VA facility. Makes you wonder how fucked up our government is. Makes you wonder how fucked up our government is. Who, they don't really give a shit about the soldiers. We're just numbers. But you see, before I joined the military, uh, I had my values. And those values is what keeps me going. You know, I, I, I don't quit. I'm a, you know, I don't quit. I don't give up. I continue to do what I do. Uh, whether, whether whoever likes it or not, you know. I've had many numerous enemies over the past. When I was a teenager, I had a lot of enemies in the small town of Reynoldville, Texas. Crooked policemen. Uh, I could say their names. And out of respect to their family, not to them, to their families, I will say their names. But I had numer numerous crooked police from the small town of Reynoldville, Texas, where there was always threatening to me. Pulling out the guns, doing the cutthroat signs at me late at night where <clears throat> I was still in high school when I was coming from track meets and stuff like that. So there is a lot of fucked up people, a, a, a lot of fucked up people out in the world, you know. Yeah, I, I might have a case of PDT, but imagine those that, imagine those, what I mean by those, imagine those that accept what they have. Which will be serial killers, murderers, that they accept the condition they had and they fulfill it at a daily basis. Imagine that. That till this day, those individuals haven't been caught by the, the, the crimes of murder that they've committed because of that accept. And maybe, maybe possibly for the same reason that they don't get the help that they need, right? Uh, but I don't know. I'm just I'm just venting a little bit here in my in my in my uh, in my group. Uh, I see. Uh, you know, when you have your own problems to deal with, you know, you I see everything that happens around me. Uh, but I don't got time time for games, playing games with people. You know, I'm done with that. Uh, but I'm doing better than what I was doing two days ago. It was, it's pretty severe. My eyes, all around my eyes was like bloodshot red, like just red and it was burning. Uh, had to put vice in my eyes. Severe allergies. Uh, that's what I had. Uh, but besides that, you know, uh, I want to focus on on continuing to do my workouts, continue to do the works that I do on my group, Spiritual Encrypted Encounters, and my Tim and Love Foundation, you know. It's like this. That's how I see it. When you ask somebody for help, and if they don't help you, 
Well, you know, God sees all this. Sooner or later, all the, the denies that they give people is going to come back to them, you know, because God is a, a person uh, that gives people chances to, to prove themselves, right? So, in seeing that, those people that have rejected people like me and other people for help, sooner or later they're going to pay it spiritually, you know, because that's part of, a part of the, the spiritual aspect of karma. You know, sooner or later it'll come back around. What goes around comes around. Uh, that's why I try to help out as many people as possible because that's within me. That's within me. If I see somebody that's being, uh, that's being spiritually attacked because of what I've been through, because of who I am as a person, because of what I believe in, what guides me spiritually, then I step, step into the picture to help out those individuals that are being spiritually targeted, right? I go there in prayer, uh, a tie by the rebuke through Jesus Christ's name, whatever's there, you know, when, and that's in some way, when, <clears throat> when they asked me at the VA, do you think about suicide? Do you think about, uh, killing people? The, the, the answer to that is no. The, the reason I say the answer to that is no, is because those are, those are things that are against God. So if I were to say, um, I say yes to that, then that's a spiritual opening for me to get spiritually attacked. So I say no, because I know that it's not right. I know that it's not good. And that's, that's against God, right? So that's why I say no to them. But you have to be careful of what you say yes to. Because that could be a spiritual opening. It's, it's, it doesn't look like it's something serious when they ask you a question like that. But in all honesty, spiritually, I've been through spiritual battles. That if you were to say yes to something like that, that's a spiritual opening for you to get spiritually attacked. Because you're, you're leaving an opening to what dwells. When they ask you about, do you commit it so, do you, do you feel like committing so, do you feel like taking somebody, another person's life? That's a spiritual opening. So you admit a yes to that, and automatically you can be infiltrated spiritually by the unseen. Makes you wonder, right? Who they really work, who they really are working for. Words sometimes with the way they are awarded, right? Is, is big. And I believe when there were things like that or when they come at me about, you're not worried about, you know, like using the fear factor, uh, the fear factor because they're trying to find a spiritual opening. I'm a Tamer Love Foundation. I don't accept the negativity that's being told to me in the, in the hospital. And how do I come out of there? Nothing wrong with me. Just, uh, a severe case of allergies, but nothing, nothing that they were trying to I should have said it. Bestow upon me, trying to use a fear factor, or trying to get me to a menace uh, of uh, thinking about suicide or taking somebody out. Right? I said no to that because I know those are spiritual openings, and so you have to be careful what you say and what you wish upon, what you accept in your heart. I see a lot of things there on, uh, on the groups where people are supposedly conjuring this, conjuring that. Those are, those are idiots. I'm going to be honest with you. Those are idiots. Uh, they're, they don't know what you're dealing with. They don't know what they're messing with. Uh, sometimes, uh, people pretend that they have, uh, some kind of power or, or something of that nature. But for those that want to conjure up certain things from the other side, they don't know what they're dealing with. And by them making contact, trying to make contact with that, they've left a spiritual opening for them to be spiritually attacked and spiritually bonded. Not unless that's what they already believe in. So either way, they're screwed, right? Now, there's a lot of people like that. 
And there's a lot of different waveforms of bondage. The people are being bonded. That they, they don't see it. I see it. You know, because I, I fight. I fight. I've been fighting this for a very long time. And it could be a, a simple, simple discussion. You know, a, a simple discussion of well, well, somebody's belief or of something that somebody's trying to portray because of 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 uh, history or something they're, they're trying to say it exists. But what if that don't exist and they're believing in it? That's a spiritual opening that there's being spiritually attacked and there's being spiritually used, not by, by the Heavenly Father, but demonic forces to continue to to, to cause that, that uh, how should I say, division or that uh, want people to believe in other things. For example, aliens, Bigfoots, Dogmen. It's other things that I know, and most of y'all know already, that they are demonic of nature. You know, when, when somebody, I seen a video of somebody saying uh, they have footage of a uh, Bigfoot, you can literally tell it was a guy in a costume. So, when people put this, this stuff out there, and people are believe, they're not saying that they're too dumb to believe it, but sometimes when people already have spiritual openings, you know, that can be used so they can get pulled in deeper. And that's a form of bondage. And y'all, y'all been noticing, right? That we've been losing people within the crypto community. Uh, it's because of that. There's the, the spiritual opening where people are believing things that are not real. So what happens when they start believing in those things that are not real? The unseen is there because they're not believing in Jesus Christ. They're not believing in the Heavenly Father. So the unseen is there and the unseen intervenes, bonds that individual, makes him sick, and takes him out of this world. We see a lot of people losing their lives. That's one of the reasons I kind of like stopped going out there investigating. It's been a while I've gone to an investigation because it was pretty getting pretty hectic. Where they were coming in numbers, trying to ambush me. That's how I got my my left toe injured. Where something jumped on me, and it felt like I had a lot of weight on me, and almost made my knee, knees buckle, and my toe got messed up. So my toe got messed up when I went there to investigate, uh, where I got uh, spiritually ambushed, where something uh, jumped on my back, unseen. And my toe got injured. Uh, but besides that. But besides that, you know. Uh, the only thing I can say is. Everybody uh, does what they do. Uh, onto their own works. Or whatever. But I'm going to go with what I know. Uh, I'm going to go with. What makes me who I am. I'm going to go with. What I've been through in my life. Till this day, till this day today, of all the wisdom and knowledge that I know, I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to go with somebody's theory or somebody's uh, man-made man-made theories. Uh, anything that's man-made, I'm not. I'm not going with that. I'm going uh, by having the my relationship with Jesus Christ and placing Him first always, and that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, that has never failed me. And I'm still here. That has never failed me. And I'm still here. And I'm going to continue the works. And I know there's a lot of people that believe in other things. In the fantasy world. That believe in things that to me are kind of ridiculous. Like I said. like They believe like in like fantasy things like Dungeons and Dragons. And, and stuff like that. You know. Uh, that... They're believing in things that they think they have power. But imagine this. I'm just, I'm just here being straight up. Nothing that is fallen. Everything that has, that's fallen from, from the heavens. The one third that fell from the heavens. They're not greater than me. They're not greater than you. Because they, they got casted. They got casted down from the heavens. So they're not greater than you. 
and they're not greater than me. Do you know why? Because we have the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. We are children of God. They shows their path. That's why they cast, God cast us down. For for anybody that dabbles in the in the in the necromancy, witchcraft, and all that crap, I'm just here to tell you if. You're following that that has fallen, the one third that has fallen, then you're nobody. You are nobody. You're nobody because you're putting yourself under what's already fallen. If you're believing in that, it goes to anybody that that believes in that. You're nobody. If you're 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 believing in something that's telling you, that's deceiving you, that's that says it's giving you power, you're believing in the one third that fall down. Their their uh their fate is already sealed, so you want to be part of that fate that's already sealed. Go ahead. By any means necessary, go ahead and be be fall to the same fate as they're gonna they're gonna have. But to me, I know that I'm a a child of God, just like every single one of we all are. Uh, we have a we have a chance to make it of the kingdom of heaven. The chance that to make it of the kingdom of heaven, we have to be obedient. We have to place Jesus Christ first. And we have to do his works. That's why I do the works that I do. My tenant law foundation. So we're able to make it into the kingdom of heaven. But those that <clears throat> belittle themselves, make themselves uh, weak. That, that, I'm calling everybody that believes in, uh, that is a warlock, a witch, or Whatever, whatever believes in any kind of demons, I'm calling y'all weak, straight up right now. You're weaker, you're weak because I'm up here because I have Jesus Christ with me. You're weak because you're putting yourself below something that has already been casted down. And if they said they work some deal with you, well, the deal that you're getting is kind of like a, a, a lime car off a used car sales lot because you're being deceived. Uh, what God has in store for us in his heavenly kingdom is a lot greater than anything here on earth and anything that has fallen can offer you. I'm just, I'm just talking straight up, you know, whoever likes this video likes it, whoever don't, don't, I really don't care. Uh, I'm just saying how it is. When people try to offer you, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, the only thing I can say is this. For those that make fun of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, right? For those who make fun of the Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, your fate's already sealed because you're not supposed to make fun of the Holy Spirit. You know, me, I'm just a person, but slash messenger. I send messages the way I send them. But you don't make fun of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I have people battle against me spiritually. Brujas, brujos, warlocks. They're not here anymore. Because they came up against Jesus Christ. And he's my protector and my avenger. You know, he takes care of my enemies. You know, when you plead against the enemy... That's wishing bad upon you, wishing death upon you, and you tell them, please don't do that. Because if you're doing that, it's gonna go back at you seven times fold. And if it's death that you're wishing upon me, it's not gonna be good for you. They don't take my words and they can still come up against me. They're not here no more. Whether they die of cancer, whether they die of a, a brain aneurysm in a couple of days, you know that I've seen that happen throughout my life. Uh, but anyway, so I'm just letting you know that I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, I got my voice back. My eyes are not burning as bad as a war. Uh, we have to stay spiritually spiritually ready at all times. And when you, when you think the enemy is focused just on you, 
we we have to pray for our loved ones because they might be targeted also. So we have to pray for those uh, for our loved ones for them to get protected uh, at all times. Uh, I'm going to do a little prayer right now. Uh, Heavenly Father, at this time, I'd like to pray for me, uh, my my family members, my son, my wife, uh, my friends that are going through something spiritual, uh, for those that are ill, for those that are uh, feel that they're being spiritually attacked. We tie bind and rebuke any un unseen forces, unclean spirits, Demonic spirits, we tie bind and rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. As I was saying that prayer, brothers and sisters, my ears started ringing real loud. You know, uh, so if I was being targeted spiritually, that's how the target, the target through your senses, which is your, your five senses, you know, they get targeted through your tear ducts, through your ears, through your mouth. Uh, privates that's how you get spiritually attacked how, that's how they try to attack the, the body but anyway so I don't know who's here I see Sister Nellie Turner uh, Cousin Jesus Carvajal Philip Barnes Sister Teresa uh, Sister Esther Jimenez how you doing, Sister Esther? Yeah, I just been through a lot, man. Uh, I just get tired of going to the VA. Uh, for PTSD especially, you know. But, you know, the, uh, what I do, you know, which is better than what any service that VA can, that can give you. Because the only service that VA wants to give you for PTSD is give you some, some med, some pills to pop. I just, I just go into prayer. Bottom line, I place Jesus Christ first when a bad thought comes and I rebuke it. And that's been uh, the cure for me. How to overcome when a bad thought or, or something that wants to give me a guilt trip of something that I had to do in combat. I tie by and rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name. Because, you know, in combat, when you go to combat, anything happens in combat. Are you are the you or the enemy is going to go? I just uh, I just. God bless to still be alive because I played Jesus Christ first. But yes, when a bad thought comes into my mind or, or a thought in that nature, I rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name because I know it's not good. So that's been my cure of controlling my PTSD is through Jesus Christ. When the VA treats me like crap, I, I pray for them. You know, I, I go into prayer when I'm leaving and I pray because you know, when somebody's treating you bad or say something bad to you, you don't want to live out of the facility with the negativity they're trying to bestow upon you. So, you know, I talk about it in Jesus Christ's name and, and I don't accept it, you know. I let that negativity stay with them. But, you know, that's those are things that I learned of what to do in order in order for, or for me to be able to stay effective in some kind of way, you know. Now, another thing I like to do is going dancing. But it's been a while I've gone dancing. Uh, I think last time I went down like three weeks ago. Uh, I believe it was like three weeks ago. I said I had a problem with my, uh, with my left toe. I got an appointment coming up on Tuesday. So hopefully we'll see what happens, what they tell me. But besides that, it was just uh, making a video... Invented a little, you know. It's kind of like <clears throat> we know where we've been. We know what we've done. Uh, but uh, it's kind of like when they don't want to help you with the conditions that you have. You know, that's that's kind of kind of messed up. The VA does that. That they reject you. Now I've been as uh, I've been asking. To talk to somebody from uh, PTSD. Somebody dealing with that in some shape or form. Till this day I haven't gotten assistance. From the Temple VA. They've rejected me all along. Uh, till this day I, I haven't uh, gotten their assistance. Uh, last time that 
that I went, I was supposed to be in the one of the first programs that they have for PTSD. Uh, when they first started it. And I remember going to it. And this guy was reading my paperwork. And I, you know, I wrote down all the, answered all the questions that told me to answer. And as this guy is reading the questions that I'm at, that I answered, he gets scared. He looks at me and he says, I'm afraid of you. And I ask him, are you the doctor? I said, no, I'm just the person re reviewing the paperwork. So why are you looking at my paperwork? If you're not the doctor, that's for the doctor. And he said, uh, I'm afraid of you. You need to leave, leave now. I'm fearing for my life. And I'm like, to my, in my mind, I was like, why are they putting a person, right? Why, why are they putting a person that's weak? They can't understand what we've been through. Why would they per, put a person like that in charge of reading confidential paperwork that we're, information that we're placing for the doctors? You know, all I know is they ran me off out of that location. The PTSD program that's, that used to be by the church. There was a, the, at the VA, Temple VA. They told me to leave because there were, the, that guy said he was fearing for his life. I don't know, how is he fearing for his life? It was just a, a piece of paper that he was reading. You know, <laughs> it was a piece of paper that I was, I answered questions and he said he was fearing for his life. I understand he was in combat with me, right? And he was the enemy. Then you see, you know, the other side of me, but he was just reading a piece of paper and he had told me if I don't leave, they was going to call security because they feared for his life. That was crazy. And ever since that day, which was like around 2002, I have got to reject it. From the Tempo VA facility or veterans, a, a veterans uh, facility, right? Veteran administration or for the veteran, from all the way up to higher, all the way down, they've rejected me. Not only there's somebody that's cutting me off from cutting the help that I, that I, that I need. I see it as shit rolls downhill. So wh whoever's in charge of them. All those people are responsible for not giving me the help that I need. You know, that's how I see it as. But I'm a man of faith. I play Jesus as Jesus Christ first and just continue to live my life that way, you know, uh, through Jesus Christ. But it's crazy, you know. They say that they're there for the veterans, you know, that serve the United States Army. Uh, yeah, they're, they're pieces of shit. I mean... I'm just being straight up, you know. The reason I'm being straight up like this is because of all the time to screw me over, you know. They're, they're pieces of shit. Uh, they're, they're, they'll, they'll put people, they'll put people to follow you around. It's kind of like they know when your appointment is, you know, when you schedule it. So you're, they already know when you're coming. They know where you've been because they'll look into your, tw uh, 2214 and know you've been in combat. I remember one day I went over there to put a complaint on the fourth floor. And I put the complaint uh, that this doctor was treating me like crap and all this. So when I start coming down the elevator, the elevator would stop in each floor and, and the, the elevator door open. There would be nobody there. The only way it'll stop in, in each floor if somebody pushed the button, right? So it's doing that all the way from the fourth floor and I get down to the, the first floor. You know, so I did it. Two floors like that. So I get to the first floor and this guy dressed all in black bumps into me. You know, hits me, boom. And I'm looking at him and, I, and he's looking at me. You know, I'm, I'm in pain because at that time I'm hurting real back from my back. So it's the way he's standing, the posture he's standing is like he's ready to attack me, like he's ready to come at me. So the only thing I can do out of being highly trained, right? So my self defense is to put my guards up. So I put my guards up because I didn't know who this guy was that was dressed all in black and he was ready to charge me. So I'm looking at him and the elevator door staying open 
and I'm waiting for him to do something because I already knew what I was going to do. He looks at me. He walks, steps right in the center of the doors, turns around, and he says, you have a good day, sir. And I said, yeah, you too, man, because I knew what he was trying to do. So as he leaves, and I see him walk away, I get out of the elevator, and as I'm walking out, out of the elevator, a security guard comes, boom, and bumps into me on purpose. So I just ignored him. It's like he bounced off of me. And, you know, I'm a pretty big guy, two, uh, 268. So he bounced off of me, boom, bounced off of me. So I just see the exit sign, and I walk out of there because I don't want the problems, you know. But so, sometimes that's what they do. They it, they come at you in a, in a very harsh way. So if you say something to them offensively, they'll write you up. Or they even have a button underneath their desk. So if they feel threatened, they, they hit the little red button. Remember one time I was at an appointment, <laughs> and I was telling the doctor I was feeling sick, you know, and I was feeling this way that I didn't want to take some of the shots she's trying to give me and all this, you know. Then she had two security guards walk in. But well, before they walked in, I had seen her push something underneath the desk. And uh, and it's like, hey, how y'all doing? So, and I was like trying to figure out why they were there. It's because she pushed the button. I wasn't there threatening her any kind of way, but that's how they are. They're always trying to look for for something to find on you. So like that, that can try to uh, reject services for you or get you out of the system, you know. They've done that to me in the past where I didn't hear, hear from the VA for about a whole year. You sub, they're supposed to do a physical, for a physical or appointments where they have to check you twice a year. I didn't hear it for, for a whole year. <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm still seeing the clinics like for, uh, the, the, the warfarin clinic and the epilepsy clinic. The warfarin clinic uh, they called me from Austin one day and they told me that did, did they, if I knew that I didn't have a team, I was like, what do you mean I don't got a team? So, well, you don't got a team to go to for help. It's like, what do you mean? You're not in no team. Yeah, I'm in this, in this goal team. I said, no. So you're not in no team at all. They said, you haven't been on a team for about six months. So I went up to them and they tried to tell me that the reason I wasn't in the team is because I missed an appointment. And I made sure I didn't miss no appointments. So I had to put myself back in the system. When they did that to me was when Obama was supposedly doing an internal investigation on the VA. You know, when they had the Obama blacklist. So I had to put myself back in the system in order for me to get help. I had to put myself back in the system of the VA. Uh, make, I make my appointments. If I have to reschedule an appointment, I will. But I make sure that I make my appointments that I need to make. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people suffer there at the VA. Uh, and let me see, I'll tell you the year, like around 2006 or maybe possibly 10. I was waiting for an appointment. The, the VA was very bad in service. I had already been sitting for about six hours. And I see this, this gentleman walk in. Uh, he walked in into the, walked in through the, through the side door and he went into the restrooms. When, uh, he went into the restrooms, he never came out. So next thing you know, I seen like four or five janitors walking with buckets into the restroom. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Well, that's, that veteran that walked in there took his life. He, 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 he shot himself and took his life. He didn't even make the news. He took his life in the facility. You know, when I think about that, that veteran... What do you, you know, what happened to him makes you wonder how many times it denied him of service. You know, when I look at my situation of how they treat me, how they haven't helped me for PTSD, I wonder if he was in the same situation I was, of uh, where he was being denied, you know. So 
you know, maybe not here on Earth. The VA is going to not pay for for those actions, what soldiers do. But if they're at fault, you know, through Jesus Christ, they will pay. They will pay for their deeds of of uh, not not doing the right thing. You know, they will pay for that through Jesus Christ. That's why I don't have no bad intent towards nobody because I know how Jesus Christ works. So I just leave it up to him, you know. Thank you. You have a blessed day. How you doing, Sister Jenna? <clears throat> well, doing a little bit better, y'all. Uh, I couldn't even talk. Couldn't even breathe right for about four hours. It's been like three. Today's my fourth day like this. But luckily, I got some medicines and stuff like that. You know, it was no... It was just a severe case of bad allergies. Uh, I had no COVID or nothing like that. No flu. But anyways, I think I've talked a little bit too much on here. Uh, how you doing, Sister Holly? Uh, I was just doing a little bit of venting. I'm a, I might go back and erase this video because I don't want, uh, the, the video to get reported to the, the Facebook users and, to the Facebook uh, people in charge from the other countries, you know, since I'm talking about Jesus Christ, they got uh, offensive because they believe in Allah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I'm thinking about, I might go back and delete this video. I don't know. It's like you can say nothing nowadays because uh, people take it offensively or they get, you know, how's that term when people say butthurt? Uh, you can't say nothing nowadays. They'll take it the wrong way. Yeah, we have... Uh, you know, the only thing I can say of what I've noticed is this. We have one corrupt government and the VA facility runs under that government. That's the only, I, the only thing I can say to you. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers of people that have died. Veterans from whether you want to look at it through uh, veterans of the Vietnam War or veterans from uh, Operation Storm. There have been thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have died through suicide. Now, the bigger question is, is it because the lack of help, which they haven't helped me. I've been going to the VA since 2002, so 22 years. Or is it because of the medicines that they give them that the side effect is suicide itself? In which that's, that's what they were trying to do to me at one point in time. When I found out what, was, what they were trying to do, I stopped taking those medicines. And that's why I'm still alive and, and speaking in truth. But yes, to them, it's, we're numbers. So one less in person person that's alive is one less person that they have to pay anything to any kind of uh, disability or anything because they'll be gone from the face of the earth when they say when they literally say we're replaceable or expendable they mean it that's why i only go to to the point i have to go and stay stay as far away as possible as i can from the facility not unless i need need some kind of help I will. I will feel better soon. Hopefully, you know. Uh, which when that storm came through, I got it hit me real. I was taking out the trash. A gust of wind came and hit me, and as soon as I came inside, you know, it's like it hit me hard, you know. So, but I'm doing a little bit better. I just gotta keep on taking the some Flonase and some of that medicine that they gave me for my throat. Uh, but I have no infection in any kind of way or sorty, just a bad case of allergies. But you got to remember, brother and sisters, there's a, that's how the unseen attacks through through our senses, tear ducts, ears, nostrils, through the mouth. That's how they infiltrate. So I've been taken out, been taken out in that way. Today is my fourth day. Uh, today is my fourth day and I've been like that. <clears throat> but I'm doing better, thank God. 
you know, I think the 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 worst one, the the bad thing that happened to me was yesterday when I was asleep. You know, uh, I was feeling nauseated. I was feeling all kinds of ways. I wasn't feeling well, and I could see an image of a woman standing right beside my bed. Looked like a nun. Looked like a nun. An image, but it was a dark shadow standing right beside me. And then when I looked, uh, I didn't see nobody there. But I could see when uh, I could see a form of somebody standing beside me. So I went into prayer, you know, uh, say I uh, take authority over you, you know, welcome here, talk about her because Jesus Christ's name. But anyways, I think I talked too much here on my t regular timeline. I'm thinking about making a video later on tonight, uh, talk about but the, maybe the things that I talked about here today. We'll see. But anyways, thank you all for tuning in. God bless every single one of y'all and your families. Uh, and uh, thank you all for tuning in. Peace.